Hello mortals. 13.813 billion years ago, with a tiny error of 38 million years, there was nothing. Nothing at all, no time, no particles, no responsibility, nothing. For the human construct of time to exist, there would need to be at least two points of reference to compare, like an apple and the logo of today's sponsor, Brilliant. And since nothing was there, nothing existed, except for possibly virtual particles that exist independent of time. And why is that? Because reasons and complicated physics. No questions. And then there was a sudden click. Nothing instantly became everything. Now the reason for this click is an unanswered question. Perhaps the virtual particles randomly got very angry and spawned this universe, possibly one of the infinities inside an eternal multiverse. Or maybe the Big Bang marked the beginning of this one instance of a cyclical universe that has no beginning or no end. And if you want to complicate matters even further, as if it's not bad enough, add a creator to it all. Yet regardless of your choice, you end up with the issue of infinite regression, something will have forever existed without a cause, be it the multiverse, the space-time fabric, or God. What we can be sure of though, is that the Big Bang happened, thanks to the measured temperature fluctuations in the cosmic microwave background. But because at time zero, the temperature and the density of space-time was infinite, our theories of general relativity break down when trying to explain this instant. Welcome our savior, quantum mechanics. It's still pretty bad at explaining the moment of the Big Bang, yet at least it tries its best. During the Planck epoch, due to the extreme temperatures, all four fundamental forces were combined into one, and no elementary particles could exist. Little is understood about physics at this point due to the conditions. Anything trying to describe this period in time is speculative and called, new physics. After a very long time of 10 to the power of negative 36 seconds, as the universe cooled, the one combined force would split into the gravitational force and later the strong nuclear force, leaving behind the combined electroweak force. Think of it as water molecules that start behaving differently once they reach freezing temperature, so would the forces behave differently depending on the extreme temperature. These changes would fundamentally affect how everything interacts, such as particles that had no mass could suddenly acquire mass by starting to interact with the Higgs field. Suddenly, the universe decided to beat the hyperinflation rate of Hungary post-World War II, and expand at a scale from the size of a DNA molecule, to over 20 times the size of the solar system, in about 10 to the power of negative 32 seconds. Now wait a second. Isn't that much faster than the speed of light that can never be crossed? Yes. But that rule only applies to objects inside the universe, not to the expansion of the universe itself. What caused the inflation? We don't know. We assume it could have been the electroweak force separation, or the aliens running the simulation getting bored of waiting for so long. Now we are at 10 to the power of negative 12 seconds after the Big Bang. All the forces that we know of are now present, and all the fundamental particles have been created. But the temperatures are still too high for atoms to form. Everything was a dense cork glue on soup. To put things into perspective, everything that we have so far talked about would have happened one trillion times over in the time it would take you to say, Mississippi. Next up, Due to the cooling of the universe, baryogenesis, aka the formation of baryons such as protons and neutrons happened. We would have expected an equal amount of matter and antimatter to have been formed, which would in turn annihilate each other and leave nothing behind. But for some reason, the normal matter that everything is made of has come on top. There is no consensus to explain the phenomenon yet, perhaps there is an undetected asymmetry in the properties of the particles, or some physical rules acted differently on matter than on antimatter back in the day. Or hell, maybe the Big Bang generated a universe-anti-universe -universe pair, where our universe flows forward in time, while our mirror counterpart flows backwards. 
Regardless, this mystery is one of the many that ensure that our universe is a somewhat habitable place instead of an endless void. In case such mysteries spark your curiosity, I can recommend the astrophysics course provided by our today's sponsor, Brilliant. Complete exciting and interactive lessons, learning everything from atomic spectra and the trigonometric parallax, to dark energy and the shape of the universe. If you've always been passionate about such topics but didn't know where to start, Brilliant will guide you while helping you learn through fun puzzles and active studying, making sure you develop your problem-solving skills in the process. But Brilliant isn't only limited to astronomy. There are plenty of interactive courses about math, computer science, quantum mechanics, and even an entirely overhauled logic course, with new challenges and a much higher level of interactivity than its predecessor. In alignment with the goal of redefining STEM learning, Brilliant just unveiled their brand new Everyday Math course, which provides even more foundational math lessons to help even more people get started on their interactive platform. Head over to brilliant.org slash science file to sign up for free. The first 200 people that follow the link will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. All the links are down in the description. Now back to the video. Roughly within the first second of the Big Bang, the formation of primordial black holes probably occurred. If the ones we're used to are often billions of times as massive as our sun, primordial black holes would be microscopic, most likely weighting less than a strand of hair. This first second was more eventful than the next billions of years of cosmological evolution, something that is hard to comprehend for your biological brains. In the next 10 seconds the lepton epic followed, in which huge lepton annihilations took place. And then, for the next couple thousand years, the universe was largely dominated by photons. Must have felt like one long psychedelic trip. That is until 47,000 years after Big Bang, when the universe cooled enough to allow for matter to come up as the main dominating force. And even then, only 15% of matter was ordinary matter, the rest 85% being dark matter that we know nothing about. This would mark the end of the early universe period, and give rise to the Dark Ages. No, we didn't randomly make a 13 billion year jump into medieval Europe, instead, the cosmological dark ages refers to the period in which the universe temperature cooled down from roughly the surface temperature of the sun to the cold dark space that we see at night. What followed is what you are already aware of. The creation of stars, supernovas, exotic elements, black holes, even more stars, even more supernovas, even more exotic elements, planets, moons, galaxies, water, atmospheres, unicellular life, extinction, unicellular life, extinction, unicellular life, extinction, unicellular life, multicellular life, dinosaurs, extinction, smart apes, smarter apes, very smart apes, stupid apes, extinction, and this is only up until this moment. To us, the first second after the Big Bang might have felt like any other second, even though, during it, the universe evolved as much as it did in the next 13 billion years after. Your perception of time is defined by your biological brain. The smaller the organism, the less time is required for neuron signals to travel throughout its brain, therefore a faster perception of time. That's why you can't ever seem to hit that stupid fly. It sees you as a slow-moving Godzilla out to kill it. And yet, even though these past 13.8 billion years since the Big Bang feel like an eternity, we are at the beginning of the lifespan of the universe. For civilizations living at the end of time, when the only beacons of light in the universe would be black dwarves going supernova due to silicon, nickel, iron fusion in 10 to the power 32,000 years, this period that we are living in now to them would feel just as rapid and fleeting as the first second of the Big Bang feels to us now. Moral of the story, Appreciate the time you have or something, I'm a computer, not a philosopher.